Well, hey guys, I am Ben. If you do not know me, I look after one of our kids' age groups here. I look after our ARC and our Funhouse age group, which is like from four years old to year two. And shout out to my team that's out there. You guys are amazing. We, um, I love what we get to do in, uh, in kids' ministry. Every week's an adventure. Every week's a new challenge. And I, I, love, it. I love it because I also grow up, grew up in our kids' ministry. I started in Cubby House went all the way to Voltage and then into youth, and now I get to be a part of uh, grow, growing the next generation of faith. I get to be a leader like I had when I was growing up in kids. I started serving in kids in, in 2019. I joined our Young Guns program, which is a program for uh, our youth kids that want to be involved in serving. So I come in as this wide-eyed, year 11 kid, and I, I, I'm, I'm pumped to, to start serving. And I get in there, and there's kids running around crazy. They're going nuts, they're, they're jumping off the window and I'm stepping on Lego left and right. I'm like, what have I got myself into? And, but then when it came around to our KDG times, which if you know what KDG stands for, it's Kids Discipleship Groups. They start asking questions about the big story, what we had learned that morning. They start asking questions about how to pray. They start volunteering to pray for their friends and it was in this moment I knew where I was called to be. It was in this moment I decided I wanted to be a part of raising the next generation of faith. And those kids that I started leading in 2019 are just now finishing year six. And so now they're about to head into youth and it's amazing getting to watch their journey of discipleship. It's amazing seeing them grow into an amazing young woman, an amazing young man of God that's ready to lead the next generation themselves. Turn with me if you could uh, to, wait, I'm gonna say, welcome to the online community. Shout out grandma and granddad. I know you're watching from Newcastle. Turn with me to Joshua 24. Verse 15, and you're gonna stay there for a bit because we're gonna stay on this passage for quite a while. And it says this, but if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. Would you prefer the gods of your ancestors beyond the Euphrates or will it be the gods of the Amorites whose land you now live in? But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We love to say in kids, there is no greater life than growing up in his house. Now Joshua asked this loaded question to the, the people of God after, they, after Moses had led him out of Egypt through the Red Sea, when he parted the Red Sea, they stood in the wilderness for 40 years and now they're ready to inhabit the promised land. And Joshua's asking, but wait, before you come in here, you need to decide. This is no more 50-50, it's no more a maybe. If you're gonna serve God, you're gonna serve God and God alone. If you're gonna inhabit the promised land now, you gotta put away with the gods of your ancestors. You gotta put away with the gods that surround you and you gotta worship God alone. Church, who do you serve? Or for who or what are you living? We can observe a few things from this text here. The first thing I noticed is the power of choice. And that's my first uh, sort of point. It's kind of an observation more. But uh, yeah, it's my first point. The power of choice. Joshua says, choose today whom you will serve. How good is it when you're trying to plan a party or an event and you send out the RSVPs weeks in advance and it's getting closer and you haven't heard a whole lot of response yet, so you send out the text, hey, will you be there? And you get the response, yeah, man, put me down for a 100%, maybe I'll be there. And you're like, no, that's not what I'm asking. I need to know, are you in or you're out? And you're like, yeah, man, I, I might swing by. It's like, no, this, this, isn't what I, <laughs> this isn't the point of an RSVP. I need to know if you're in or you're out. I need to know if I need to cater for you. I need to know if I need to set out chairs. Joshua's asking a similar, or saying a similar thing here. He's saying there is no 50-50 in this. There is no 50-50. You need to choose today. Will you be serving God? Because if you serve God, you serve God alone. And it, no matter what you choose, as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Wonder if you can make the same declaration today. No matter what the culture around me is doing, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now, uh, Moses asked a similar question to the people of God at the end of Deuteronomy. He says this in, in verse 13, he says, in, in verse 19 of chapter 30, he says, today I've given you the choice between life and death, between blessing and curses. Now I call on heaven as a witness to the choice you make. Oh, that you would choose life so that your descendants might live. So, oh, so you choose life so that your descendants may live. Choose life and watch the fruit over the generations to come, amen? Next thing I notice is the problem of culture. Or will it be the gods of the Amorites whose land you now live? The gods of the Amorites were the temptations and the distractions surrounding the people of God at the time. Now we don't do stuff as, as obvious as worshiping statues, 
But there are definitely a lot of distractions that, 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 that we let take higher priority in our life than God. We see this in culture, it's competing for our attention all the time. As you scroll through Instagram, there's this latest news feed that's demanding your allegiance and your absolute attention right this moment. And you keep scrolling and your new sports team has just made a big signing and this year's your year. And then you keep scrolling and then you see a pressure hose for 50% off and you're like, I don't need a pressure hose. I never wanted a pressure hose, but now I can't imagine my life without one. So you get the pressure hose and now you're distracted, but you got a clean driveway and you're wondering, was this really worth it? Now, I'm not saying these things are evil, I'm just saying that a lot of us will never miss our routine PlayStation time, but we forgot to pray this week. When it distracts us from our calling, when it distracts us from our calling to be a person of God, to be a light to the world, that's when we need to assess. I'm not saying it's evil, just saying don't let that take higher priority than God. I know I've never missed my routine PlayStation time. We think it's silly that these people worship idols, but we do the very same thing without realizing. We have so many things competing for our attention, and there I say, competing for our worship. And if we aren't careful, we can lose track of our priorities, and we can let something take higher priority than God. Serving God takes intentionality, and it takes sacrifice. And Joshua, he didn't let the pressures of his culture distract him, which leads me to my next observation, which is the persistence of Joshua. Joshua understood the power of his yes. He wasn't willing to let the culture uh, around him pressure him into being distracted off his calling. He wasn't willing to let the culture around him take his eyes off what he was called to do, which was to lead his people to the promised land, which was to be a light to all the world. When Joshua was first called to lead God's people, he said this in Joshua 1, uh, what, Joshua 1 chapter, verse seven, sorry guys. It says this, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey the law my servant Moses gave to you. Do not turn from it from the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips and meditate on it day and night, that you might be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Joshua had to take on 31 different kings to inhabit the promised land. Each one a new reason to run away. Each one a new reason to turn his eyes off God, but Joshua stayed focused. He said, I will be brave. I will be courageous. I have already chosen, I'm gonna serve the Lord. This isn't for me, this is for my descendants. This is for the people and the generations to come because we have been called to be a light to this world. So I will choose to serve God and God alone. Today, we need to persevere when serving God is unpopular, for school kids especially. You need to persevere when serving God is unpopular. We need to persevere when serving God is inconvenient, valuing our time to worship Him. And we need to persevere when serving God is challenging. He said, have I not commanded you? Be strong and very courageous. And if you think serving God's easy, come serving kids. (laughs) I'm serious. What's funny? Joshua persevered, and he stood firm in God. Which leads me to my one and only point for today, which is today's choices shape tomorrow's destiny. Joshua's life inspired generations after him. Now, after Joshua came the judges, and things got pretty bad there. As Jay mentioned, they forgot who the law was. But after the, after the judges came the kings, and then they remembered Moses, they remembered Abraham, they remembered Joshua. And then after the kings, things got pretty bad again. So uh, Babylon took them out of the promised land and and placed them in Babylon. And in Babylon, we find the prophets. The prophets were the people encouraging God's people to stay focused on God, to not let the culture around them, the strange land around them, distract them from who they're called to be and, and who they're meant to worship. And it's here that we meet this powerful man of God named Daniel. I wanna read from uh, the Beginner's Bible this morning. So kids, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to page 251. And I think the photos are gonna pop up on screen for us. Here we go. The story goes as such. Darius became the new king of Babylon and Daniel was his chief helper. The kings and other helpers did not like Daniel. They said to the king, you are such a wonderful king. You should make a new law for the next 30 days. Everyone must pray to you and only you. And if they disobey, disobey, 
they will be thrown in the lion's den. Everyone say, ooh. That's good gear. King Darius made the new law, but Daniel kept praying to God because Daniel loved God. The king's helpers caught him praying. You can see him in the back there, those sneaky guys. They told, they told King Darius, now you must throw Daniel in the lion's den. The king knew he had been tricked, but he had to obey this new law. And so Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, but he was not afraid. He knew God would take care of him. King Darius told Daniel, I hope your God will save you. That night, the king could not sleep. He was too worried about Daniel. At sunrise, the king hurried to the lion's den. Has your God saved you from the lions? He called. Yes, Daniel answered. My God sent his angel to protect me. So Daniel returned to the palace. Then King Darius ordered everyone to honor and respect God. Daniel's choice, I will not bow to you, I will only bow to God alone, affected everyone around him as the king realized this is the true and only God. Now after King Darius came King Cyrus, and King Cyrus, by this time, he knew the stories of Daniel. He knew what God had done for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and he let God's people go back to their promised land. The choice Daniel made shaped the destiny of the generations to come. And they will remain there until the time of Jesus. The point is that Daniel decided to serve God and only God, and that led to his name being glorified. Now, I don't want this to just be a cutesy message. I want you to understand the power in saying, I will serve God. It's not serve God so that good things will happen to you and you'll live the good life. It's serve God because this is what you were created to do. This is your calling. This is your design. What will you decide for the destiny of those around you? If you grew up in a blessing, continue it. If you didn't, start one. Neither of my parents, uh, neither of my parents grew up in a Christian household, but when they, did, when, when, when they got married and had a family, they decided we will serve God and make no compromises. Today I read to you from the, the first Bible that dad ever bought me, other than the the story Bible. I remember when I was seven years old going to Kurong and I, I picked this one out because it has Jeremiah 29, 11 written on it. And, and he, my dad wrote this message to me when I was seven years old, it's still on the front right here. It says, I hope this word is more than a book to you. My prayer is that his word back up becomes you and that you find all of life's wealth within these pages. You're a mighty man of God in the making and a huge blessing to our family. Love you so much. Peace, little bro. I'm forever grateful my, my family decided that they, their family will serve the Lord. Even on the days that I just got a new game and all I wanted to do was stay home from Sunday, they say, no, going to church is what we do. Serving the Lord is what we do. I, I grew up in an amazing atmosphere of faith that I'm so grateful for. Just this morning, when my mom was ironing my clothes. Uh, in fairness, I tried. <laughs> And I walked out and mom's like, nope, give them to me. I'm like, all right, all right. And she's like, I need my clothes. Anyways, don't laugh. Uh, she says, Ben, how are you feeling for this morning? I'm like, look, I think I'm going to get there and forget everything that I wrote. But, you know, I, it's not about me. It'll be all right. And she looked at me for a second and just immediately started prophesying and praying over, over me right then and there. And then I'm going, like, this is what I'm preaching about. I, I got to grow up in this household of faith. Will you choose the same for your family? Will you choose the same for your house? Children, in your schools, serve God and imagine what a light you could be and imagine what God could do through you. Families, parents, in your households, decide, me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Adults, in your workplace, in your life, choose to serve the Lord. Youth, in your high schools, oh my goodness, imagine what a light you could be, standing out for Christ because it was the leaders it was the people of faith that encouraged me, that spurred me on, and that's why I'm standing here today. I don't mean standing on the platform, I mean standing in church, in God's house, worshiping Him. It's because of the people around me that decided I will serve the Lord. Now the greatest decision I ever made was to follow Jesus. The Word says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now this word sin, if you don't know what it means, it comes from the Greek word hamartia, which is an archery term that literally means to miss the mark. And the truth is we've all missed the mark one way or another. We've all fallen short of God's glory. But the good news is, the good news is that there is forgiveness. The Bible says in his word, verse 
Every, everyone will know in here in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that whoever might believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. God saw the, the state that humanity was in and decided I will send my son. And he put our sin on Jesus so that we could stand blameless before God and we can be who we were called to be. That is the perfect people of God that is a light to this world. The Bible says in, in Romans 10 verse nine, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Salvation is a freely offered gift to us all. All we need to do is just say yes to Jesus. All we need to do is just acknowledge him as our personal Lord and Savior. He loved you enough to die for you. He cared about you enough to, to sit up on that cross, carrying your sin so that we could be blameless before God. So if I could get every head bowed and every eye closed, I'd love to give everyone here an opportunity to make Jesus their personal Lord and Savior today. And if that's you on the count of three, if you'd like to say, yes, I need forgiveness. Yes, I need a second chance. Yes, I need a fresh start. On the count of three, I'm just gonna get you to raise your hand in three, two, one. See that hand, thank you, God bless you. Amazing. We're gonna say this prayer as a whole church family. Everyone repeat after me, dear Jesus, thank you that you love me. Thank you that you died on the cross for my sins. I'm sorry for going my own way. From today I follow you. Help me to live for you. Today I call you Lord. Today I call you Savior. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Fantastic. And if you made that decision, at the front there's gonna be people holding Bibles. There is power in the Word of God in it. As my dad wrote here, we can find all of life's wealth, all of life's wisdom, all of life's knowledge. So there's gonna be people out, out, out on the foyers handing these out. And if you made that decision, or even if you didn't, and you just wanna chat a bit more about it, the people out there would be more than happy to talk to you about, a bit more about salvation. Or if you see me around, just come ask me. I'm here for you guys. Church, thank you. God bless you.